Fiat currency has no intrinsic value. This means the piece of paper or coin itself has no value. This approach to money varies from other forms of money whose value is derived from some physical good. It is usually gold or silver, and this is called commodity money. Banks make the majority of their profits on interest rate spreads called net interest revenue. Globally, governments have created negative interest rate bonds, and banks can essentially borrow money at negative rates. Then, the banks go out and loan to consumers and other businesses at a higher, positive rate. Why would you save it and work for it, if they can print it faster than you could work for it? Why you keep saving when they are printing it? The rich do not work for money. The Federal Reserve can always print more money. However, they cannot build houses or create companies to invest in. You need to exchange your cash for real assets. Cash is trash. Printing paper money and buying gold with it. It will go down in history as the scam of all scams, an unprecedented wealth transfer. Welcome to the Atlantis Report. Fiat money depends entirely on the belief that it has value. The Indians who sold Manhattan Island for wampum, beads and seashells thought the same about their money. The intrinsic value of all fiat currencies is the same, zero. Because all that money is created by issuing an equal amount of debt, meaning that exponentially growing chart represents debt as well as money. It is literally a zero-sum game. This is all public knowledge. That and the money is being concentrated into the money power monopolist mega corporate empire while the debts are being consolidated into the debt money surf classes. When Nixon took us off the gold standard in 1971, gold was official $35 an ounce. At the approximate price of gold at $1,458, this would mean a compounded rate of 8.14% for 48 years. Based on $1,458, the dollar has lost 97.7% of its value against gold. If gold went to $2,000, the compounded rate would be almost 8.8% and a loss of 98.25% for the dollar. I think that is a pretty good showing for gold. That is a pretty good indication of the rate of inflation, the loss of value of the dollar over time relative to the amount of gold. These are not organic events but carefully crafted policy decisions by the money changers in the temple. When all hell breaks loose, bread and water will inevitably outpace the delusional value of money. Money is based on debt. The only way to shore up debt is to eliminate the money it was used to create. If all the bank loans were paid, no one could have a bank deposit, and there would not be a dollar of coin or currency in circulation. This is a staggering thought. We are entirely dependent on the commercial banks. Someone has to borrow every dollar we have inflow, cash, or credit. If the banks create ample synthetic money, we are prosperous, if not, we starve. We are absolute without a permanent money system. When one gets a complete grasp of the picture, the tragic absurdity of our hopeless position is almost incredible, but there it is. It is the most important subject intelligent persons can investigate and reflect upon. It is so important that our present civilization may collapse unless it becomes widely understood and the defects remedied very soon. The monetary system will fail because the debt-based system relies on continually expanding debt. But the more the debt grows, the lower the value of the currency unit. Eventually, the limit is reached. As debt goes exponential, the currency value goes to zero. No currency system ever survives. They all die the same way. It's no secret our economy is artificially synthetic in a complicated bizarre way, and as such, requires a frequent stimulus to keep things afloat. Unfortunately, the economy becomes immune and requires a forever supply of new creative solutions to prevent collapse. Imagine that. So in keeping things afloat, we better never run out of creative ideas. Maybe the Fed has a website to submit creative ideas because this will be an all-hands effort. Going off the gold standard means that we can buy all we want from foreign countries and run up trade deficits until the cows come home. The problem is, we either have to print money to make up for the wealth in dollars that left the country, or we have to hope those foreign countries will recycle them back into the US through treasuries. It seems we have to count on both of those now as we monetize the debt and count on foreigners to fund our lifestyles through treasuries at some point. Game over. The time will come when the US dollar will collapse and be worth no more than the scrap and or collection value of its cotton paper and dross coins. We are coming to a period I call, the global currency reset. 
As talks about an economic collapse are heating up among economic experts, some believe that it might even trigger a global currency reset. Basically, the global currency reset refers to a process where the US dollar will eventually lose its place as the global currency. Instead, gold or some other instrument will be used as the new standard. In 1944, the Allied countries came together to establish a new global monetary system. Called the Bretton Woods Agreement, they decided to ditch the gold standard and use the US dollar as the global currency. The US benefited greatly from this new currency system, and the dollar made its way into central banks around the world. In time we left the fixed rate system. Richard Nixon stopped backing US dollars with gold globally in 1971. This was known as the Nixon shock. Since then, the dollar and all other currencies in the world exist without any support from a hard asset like gold. After the 2008 financial crisis, experts started predicting that the current financial system was on its last legs. Since the Federal Reserve was created in 1913, the dollar has lost 95% of its value, its worth eroded by inflation. The US debt currently sits at over $22 trillion and grows daily. In 2011 Standard & Poor, a rating agency downgraded US sovereign debt from AAA to a lowly A. The 2009-2008 financial crisis and stock market crash which started in the US through the sub-prime mortgage debacle. That was another flag to the rest of the world, signaling a move away from the dollar toward other currencies. The American people actually showed resistance against central banks for a long time. Before the FED was established, three central banks were shut down by the Americans. In 2019, global debt hit $250 trillion. Encouraged by lower interest rates, governments went on a borrowing binge as they ramped up spending, adding $3 trillion to world debt in Q1 alone. It reverses a trend that started at the beginning of 2018, of reducing debt burdens, when global debt reached its highest on record, $250 trillion. The IMF, the World Bank, one after another, are warning of a recession. Last week, a central bank said gold could serve as a trust anchor for a renewed international monetary system, in the event of a global reset. In an article on its website, the De Nederlandse Bank boldly claims, if things go wrong, prices may fall. But, financial crisis or not, a gold bar always holds value. We're not sure when the global currency reset will happen, or what will be the trigger, i.e., a corporate debt time bomb that could crash the global economy. Almost $19 trillion of debt is owed by companies that don't earn enough to cover interest payments. We are absolutely sure the global currency reset will happen, and gold will play a crucial role in the transition to a new world currency. Do you know about NESARA? NESARA is the National Economic Security and Reformation Act. It was to be announced on the morning of September 11, 2001. NESARA provides significant financial benefits to American citizens, including, number one, end of income taxes. Number two, forgiveness of credit card and mortgage debt as a remedy for bank frauds. Number three, U.S. Treasury Bank System, which absorbs the Federal Reserve and new precious metals backed U.S. Treasury currency. Number four, restoration of constitutional law, and much more. The day is approaching with an inevitable economic collapse and stock market crash. When the currency is created as debt, which it is, it requires an ever-expanding currency supply forever. Say they print a million bucks, and that's the only money there is. At 2% interest, that million bucks requires $1,020,000 to be paid back. Where's the extra $20 grand come from? It doesn't exist, so it has to be printed too. And you can't actually pay off the million, because then there'd be no money in circulation. So you have to reprint the million plus 20 grand. Now, if you want the economy to grow, that million dollars has to grow too. Otherwise, you'd have 0% GDP growth. So 1 million becomes 2 million. Well, now you owe 40 grand in interest. This has been the way the siren works for over a century now. External debts and our currency and our economy are all linked. Now for the real kick in the nuts. If you want the economy to keep growing at the same rate, the debt must grow at an exponential rate. If society is used to the growth rate from 1 million to 2 million, you can't just go to 3 million next time. From 1 to 2, it was 100%. From 2 to 3 would only be 50%. So you have to grow it from 2 to 4 million. Of course, then you owe 80 grand in interest. 
and the next printing has to go from 4 million to 8 million. And on and on it goes. Any attempted slowdown in the growth leads to economic contraction. That's what the QT over the last year did. So now we see the economy slow. So they have to print more. And even if they save the economy again, next time they will just have to print even more. This is the real crux of it all. The debt is literally required to grow not at a linear rate, but at an exponential one. The average human mind has trouble comprehending exponential growth, but we've reached the point where either we have the economy slow, or our debt goes full on hockey stick at this point in the graph. Or, we get a new monetary system and currency and start over. Those are literally the only choices. Professor Lawrence Kotlikoff in 2012 estimated the U.S. government's future commitments of the net present value of over $222 billion. Kotlikoff said $222 trillion, not billion. No one can know what the exact figure is for future government liabilities, of which welfare is an increasing component. No one is allowed to know the real state of government spending thanks to the Federal Accounting Standards Advisory Board Rule 56, promulgated this year. Add that reality to the $21 trillion of unsubstantiated adjustments, i.e., missing, presumed stolen, from 20 years of using the Pentagon credit. The federal government will probably collapse, zeroing out all the liabilities, but meanwhile, the criminals will still have $21 trillion or the assets bought with it. This was the Atlantis Report. Please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.